Hey everybody, this is Casey and I am uh, with you for just a little bit here on the Wall to Wall Country Show today. Most of you know that I'm not live in the studio, but um, I am uh, hanging out in Florida. But of course, each and every show, we like to make sure that we follow the tradition of having a country artist on the show. So I've made arrangements to speak with an artist via phones today. So I'm calling in from Florida and my guest is calling in. Well, we're going to find out from where. Please make welcome my guest for this week's show, Mr. Lee Ellis. Hey, Lee, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing good. Awesome. So where are you calling in from, Lee? I'm calling out of Georgia, so not far from you. Right. Florida. Well, you could come down and meet me in Florida. We could go I hang out that. in the sunshine. <laughs> yeah, <I do. laughs> awesome. Well, we're connecting here on the Wall to Wall Country Show. It's actually being broadcast from Pennsylvania, uh, but it's an internet uh, radio station, so we like to uh, get out there and get everybody to hear about some of these great country artists uh, that are out there and, and producing some music and having a good time uh, with all of the great music that they're providing. So, Lee, why don't we get kind of go back in time just a little bit and find out about how Lee Ellis got started and moved into the whole idea that you do outlaw country, which is a little different than some country artists of today, and uh, here's some of your music. But what, what, where did Lee Ellis come from? Uh, uh, you know, tell us a little bit, a short version of your background, Lee. Well, the kid back in the 80s, of course, we didn't have uh, daycare, so everybody went to churches. So, of course, they made us sing, forced us to sing, you know, and stuff in church. And I would always be, you know, kind of a smart aleck and make my own lines and do my own thing. So, uh, <laughs> Started out, so kind of outlawed in as a four or five year old kid, and then I guess in the nineties, I uh, everybody had the cassette Walkmans, and I just would sing and play along with it. And then everybody in my mom's side of family, they're all musicians and play music, and then it just kind of stuck with me. And then later on in life, in my thirties now, I just kind of got serious about it, and more serious about trying to really do something with it. Okay, so when you talk, uh, apparently, you know, you've had music surrounding you your right. whole life and right. you know obviously you were drawn to the outlaw or the southern rock side and, right and that's what i grew up my stepdad was real big into southern rock so mm -hmm. that was really where that come from and then i just always liked that true outlaw sound and and it just died out and then they had the outlaw movement back in the 70s and now here it is 30 40 years later and i want to do the same thing make an outlaw movement and bring back the real true country music yeah, I think I think you're right. I think it's gotten lost a little bit um, in today's genre, and I'm not saying that today's country. There's anything wrong with it, right. um, you know. I just, I, I mean, because some of the genre lines are actually really kind of getting grayed, you know, between rock and genre. I mean, you got Kid Rock doing country, and and you got Steven Tyler doing country. So there's there's this whole movement of new things being created, and maybe this is. A, a perfect time for you to reintroduce something that has been lost a little bit. Some of your big influences, Lee, um, I read in your bio, why don't you mention some of those and people will understand kind of where you're coming from. You've got some pretty big hitters as far as your your uh, outlaw country is, as people that you were following back in the day. Right. Johnny Cash and Leighton Jennings, and they were the two main. That's where I got come up with the song Cocaine and Whiskey from. And then... Um, once I wrote Cocaine and Whiskey and released it, everybody started calling me the young Johnny Cash. They think, you know, they, they think I'm the reincarnation of of that. So that, that really meant a lot to me to be able to fill the shoes and bring that kind of, put people in the mindset of Johnny Cash. Wow. That's that's really cool. Are you, guy, are you a guy that dresses in black all the time? <laughs> no, I don't dress in black, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, now that... Voice, I guess. Now that you've mentioned that song, this is, uh, now you're talking about Cocaine and Whiskey. It was one of your first songs or the first song you put uh, out there? The first, first song I ever recorded and wrote. My, so, yeah, it was my very first. And why don't you tell us a little bit about that song? How did you come up with that combination? Well, the Cocaine and Whiskey come from, uh, I, I was watching biographies about, like, George Jones and Waylon Jennings, and they would they would always just struggle with drugs and the whiskey problem and cocaine and then they would just sober up just long enough to go to another show unlike guys today i mean back then drugs and alcohol were the, pretty much the, the norm back then right right so that was kind of the storyline behind the song was living show to show 
pound cocaine and whiskey. Now, like you said, you released this. Is this on a hard copy somewhere, or if people it's like, a, how yeah, do they? It's a, it's, it's a single. It's also on Amazon. You can buy it on Amazon, and you can also download it on Reverb. We released that as a single. Are you planning on uh, putting that on uh, a full-scale album at yeah. some point? Right. We're doing an album now, and we should have an album out by May, I hope. Oh, that's that's coming up pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. Um, well, uh, good luck with that. I hope you do get it out there. And uh, now, are you going to do hard copies with the CD and uh, do the do the on the shelf kind of marketing, or is this mostly going to be electronic music? Uh, it's going to be both. We're going to do both. We're going we're going to have a release party with the album, and we go on tour this May. And once we go on tour, we'll promote. We're going to promote the album. Is what we're going to do on tour. Nice. And where's your tour going to take you, uh, Lee? Yeah, uh, so far it's Oklahoma, Las Vegas, California. We're all, we, we're scheduled to go all over the United States. Nice. Oh, that sounds like a fine plan. And you're going to be doing that oh, most yeah. of the summer? That'll be, yeah, pretty much a summer tour. We're going to have an outlaw summer tour, and then we'll do some small things before that. But, yeah, pretty much the summer is going to be wide open tour to promote the album. Wow, that sounds like fun. You know what, and uh, just a, a little kind of wink, wink, nudge, nudge, since we're friends now. <laughs> Yeah. You get that uh, done if you would shoot me a copy of it. We'd be glad to get um, there we go. all the songs. Yeah, and I got yeah, I mean, yeah. So all the I'm songs out there for you. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we always like to have. I, I personally like to have the CDs if it is because I like playing it in other places. And right, if exactly. people don't know who you are, then I can say, oh, that's Lee Ellis, Very and good. here's his CD, and this is how you can you can get a hold of his music, especially with yours. Not the typical country. You know, people who are, um, you know, the Outlaw Country fans, they're hardcore fans, and anything they can get their oh, hands yeah. on, I think they're going to like what you got. Yeah, it was kind of funny. I have some uh, I have some celebrity family, and and then I've got to know Jason Aldean and all, and that's what he told me. He said, to, to make it in this business, you got to stand out, and that's kind of where that, you know, I was doing I was doing music before and never went nowhere, but then I stopped and, Started doing this whole outlaw thing and it like it just totally changed. My fan base was just growing and growing every day. It's just crazy how just one little thing like that can change your career. That's pretty awesome. So that was good words of advice from Jason Aldean, huh? Oh yeah, oh yeah. He really, I mean, he really, yeah. I mean, he, I stopped and took some time off and then recreated myself and it just really, then it just was like night and day. It's amazing how that happens. And that's what he did in his career, so that's kind of, I guess, you know, best advice. That sounds pretty awesome. Listen, we talked a little bit about cocaine whiskey, and I think what I'd like to do is uh, go ahead and play that for my listening audience before we have to take a quick break. Um, I think it's going to be a good song. It's your single that's out there, and again, if people want to get their hands on it, the Amazon, the Reverb, obviously if they can um, get it through your website and stuff like that, we'll talk about how people can find you uh, after we come back from the break. But uh, why don't we go ahead and play your cocaine whiskey song. And if you would do me the honors, Lee, would you go right ahead and introduce your song for me? This is uh, Lee Ellis, written by Lee Ellis and Prevo Rogers, Cocaine and Whiskey. We're back uh, right here on uh, Wall to Wall Country with me, Casey, my guest today. Lee Ellis, Mr. Outlaw Countryman, trying to bring the genre back to life. We heard before the break uh, his first single, uh, written and produced, and uh, got it out there as a single, a little something called Cocaine and Whiskey. Now remember, folks, if you like what you're hearing, check it out on Amazon and Reverb. And uh, Lee, if people do want to find more information about you or what you have going on in your tour, what's the best way for people to track you down? Uh, Right now we got of course, we got a Facebook. I got a Facebook fan page and Reverb Nation. Also, I'm going to be on uh, John John Burden Productions, which is uh, my uh, promotions agent and booking agent. So they can find me on there. My record label is uh, 308 Productions, so they can find me on there too. What about social media? Are you a social media bird? Uh, I got tweet. Yep, Twitter. I got Twitter. Uh, it's, uh, Lee Ellis 1982. Okay, and a Facebook page. And a Facebook page. All right. And also uh, Instagram. Oh, okay. 1982. And some information, if they're requesting uh, information, like where your tour is heading next and, and where they can get your ha- their hands on your music, um, are you the guy that responds to most of the social media posts and stuff? Uh, I do, yeah, right now directly, yeah. I mean, 
my uh, promotions manager is going to be handle, handling all the booking, and you know, as far as okay. later on, he'll be handling everything as far as where, where we're going and all that. Okay. Well, that sounds awesome. Now, one of the things I like to ask my artists, um, most of the time they have a, a special place in their heart or, or they have a song that they've written or produced for something a little bit more specific than just a song that came to mind. And you have a little something called Remember the Falling. You want to tell us a little bit about that song, Lee, and what it means to you? Yeah, that song, I actually uh, got chosen to do that song from the Canadian Heroes. Oh, okay. And, um, organization and um my stepdad was a uh, vietnam veteran and uh, he ended up getting agent orange exposure and nine years later from the symptoms of it and uh, i was doing a video one day out in the cemetery and the lady liked it that wrote the song remember the fallen and she sent me the song and we went to the studio and did it and it really meant a lot to me because it was you know not only for the honor of my stepdad that had passed away and died for our country, but all the other veterans that have died for our country. Do you find that um, with that out there, people request for you to play at maybe some benefits or something that help out our soldiers, uh, past, present, and in future? Is that something that you find a connection with? That's hopefully, that's going to be the connection. We're working with the Wounded Warrior Project here in America, and then she's working with the Canadian Heroes in Canada, so that's it's kind of developing now. So okay. hopefully, we're we're thinking hopefully like for a Veterans Day song is hopefully what we're pushing for for huh. Veterans Day. Wow, and I think that would be an amazing honor to have something like that out there, and uh, you know, to get that exposure not only for your personal career but for something that I would think maybe gives you a little bit more satisfaction because of the meaning behind the song and, and what right. it means. And, and people right. might be able to connect with you even just that much more. Yeah, it was a different. It was it was totally different. I, it was more of a song to do to dedicate to him and the soldiers than it was, you know, than it's kind of a stepping out of my limb of what I do. It's not really my style, but it was it meant a lot to me to do it, so that's why I did it. And is this song available that people can get? Yes, it's on Reverb Nation, too. They can download it on Reverb. Okay. And I don't know what we're going to do. Well, we probably won't put it on the album, but we'll make it just a single where they can just download it and make it into a single. Okay. Awesome. And that's awesome And that you're working with uh, uh, some of those organizations that really help our right. our men and women who are, you know, sacrificing every day and, and not home for the holidays, you know. And, you know, summer's right around the corner. You know, kids are... Kids are wanting their families around them, and yet, you know, the yeah. parents serve. So it's tough, definitely tough. Um, I think we want to actually play that song, um, give people a listen for it. And, uh, again, you know, if, if they like it and, and want to support you with this song, it's ways that they can find you on Reverb Nation, on your website. Your information is up on the Wall to Wall Country Show page. So if they're, they're not sure or they're having a hard time tracking you down, they can go there and get the links. Um, and on that, too, they can find out information about your tour, which is coming up in May, um, and, and the album. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what you have coming up in just a little bit. Lee, can you hang in there for just a few more minutes? Sounds good. All right. We're going to take a bottom-of-the-hour ID break um, right here for PPR. We're going to be back with a little bit more Lee Ellis uh, coming up next after the break. Remember the Falling, uh, a song that... Uh, goes out to all of our veterans, past, present, and future, um, trying to, you know, remember them. And that I, that's the whole premise of the song, is to make sure people don't forget that they're out there risking their necks every day for us, you know, so that we can have the, the ability to do some of the things that we do. We'll be right back, right after this, on Penn's Peak Radio. And wall-to-wall country, don't go anywhere. A nice... Powerful song there from Lee Ellis, uh, a single that is going to be released, but you can already, you can, they can already get their hands on this song. Remember the Fallen correctly? Yes, yes, it's already out. It's already, it's already out okay. on Reverb, and it's going to be put on. Uh, should be, should be out on Amazon and everything too. Okay, so they can be looking for that, um, finding that song if they like it. We've already played Cocaine and Whiskey, uh, which is also out there. But you had mentioned about a project of a new album and maybe some new music. You want to give us a little insight about what you got going on there? Yeah, we're trying to uh, we're trying to do a little cross, kind of do maybe like some Marshall Tucker kind of outlaw country with a little Charlie Daniels mix, give you kind of a 
that real roughneck, good old country with some southern rock behind okay. it. I think that's going to be some some kind of a new age country kind of thing we're going to work with. All right, and you have a or have another new song out. Uh, is this off a new album as well? Uh, it's going to be part of. Well, it'll be part of the whole album. It'll and it's added to the album. And it's all good ones are gone. That sounds like it's a story from the heart. That's a uh, yeah. My yeah, my producer wrote that song, and it's kind of it's kind of a flashback to back to way you know remembering all the the good singers like Hank Williams and. Johnny Cash and all the all the, but it's also saying that you know nowadays it's about skinny jeans and ball caps and that, you know it kind of makes fun a little bit of the newer era you know it's kind of kind of a kind of a cliche song you know it kind of makes fun of the new guys and remembers the old guys. Do you find with a song like that, um, maybe when it comes to mind, I, I hear the title and maybe I think all the good ones are gone, like all the good men are gone or all the good women are gone. Um, <laughs> do you think? Um, it can be interpreted as that, or it's strictly about music. Uh, I mean, I guess if you just heard the t- title, maybe. But once, as soon as you hear the song, you'll 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 grab right onto what it's about. Okay, and our listening audience is gonna be able to do that. I'm gonna close out the show with that song and remind everybody that the Wall to Wall Country Show re-airs in its entirety uh, Sunday morning. This show will re-air this Sunday morning. Uh, kicking off at 8 a.m. Eastern with the interview in the second hour. So I'll play All the Good Ones Are Gone to remind everybody about you, Lee, and how they can find you on the Facebook and the Twitter and all the social medias and track you down on your website. Find out about your upcoming tour in May, uh, about the show you're going to be on um, uh, that you talked about a little bit, and, of course, about the new album that you guys are putting together, and you're going to have some new music out uh, anything else new and exciting that you think maybe our listening audience uh, wants to kind of like be sitting on the edge of the seat for, Lee? Uh, we're, we're, I'm getting close, closer and closer now to becoming a, uh, a full CMA member, to be a CMA member, so that's, 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 that's a ult- ultimate goal, that's the next step to moving up to a bigger label and becoming, moving off independent and moving to a big label, so that's, that's a really awesome, exciting thing right now becoming a CMA member. Well, good luck with you. I wish you the best of luck with that, and I think that will really, really help you, um, you know, get the style of music that you want out because, um, you know, like we've mentioned, you know, you're, you're kind of doing that cross of the outlaw and the, the back country, uh, yeah, not quite as much as the new stuff. And I think, it's, I think it's, it's a good way to also tip your hat to some of those who have passed because I think that's getting lost a little bit. Not a lot of people are doing it, Lee. I think you're on no, the right path I, there. I appreciate it. That was the whole goal of what I wanted to come out and do, and that's what I sat down and really thought about. And It's, it's really the market of it. It's, it's hard, and that's why I call myself, they call me the outlaw, because you've got, you got to force yourself and you know put yourself out there because it's something that's not out there. So, And then when they hear it, they're like, oh, my gosh, it takes them back to that time. So that's pretty awesome how it works. Well, it's getting it in front of the people, Lee, and we're going to do our best here at PPR to help you do that in front of our listening audience and uh, try to direct some people in your direction. I know a lot of my listening audience loves the classics. I play a lot of them here, dating all the way back to the 30s. And awesome. Also, of course, you know, I, I play all those greats, the Johnny Cashes and all those guys, and uh, I think the sound that you're going for is something that I know my audience is going to know and like so uh, I'll be pointing them in the direction of how they can get some of their hands uh, on your music through Amazon and Reverb. And then, um, you know, when you get that new album out there, feel free to let me know that, and we can get that help you get that posted out there as well um, on how people can get uh, a whole CD of, of some great n- new right. outlaw classic country. <laughs> I don't, right. you know, you might have to come up with your own genre. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. It's kind of a, yeah, it's kind of, kind of a, a, a traditional mix with outlaw southern it's gonna be all kind of a just like you said it's gonna be a back just that backwoods good old right. country music well i wish you all the best with everything lee and again um i always like to extend this you said you're going to be bebopping around this summer uh two different states if you ever find yourself up here on the eastern side of the state of pennsylvania Pennspeak radio doors are always open to my artists you know how to reach me via facebook um, you have my information. Feel free to track me down, and we'd love to have you in the studio and do some stuff live right here in our studio. 
yeah, that'd be awesome. We'd love, yeah, me and the band would love to do some stuff. But that's another thing we want to do when we're kind of on downtime. We've got a radio station and do interviews. Well, keep us on the list. Definitely keep us on the list when you're doing that radio tour, and we'd love to have you for sure. That'd be great. Um, I, is there anything else you want to pass on to the listening audience, Lee, before I let you go? I know you you guys are always so busy doing um, a million things. Well, what's kind of cool, my, just to get some people hope out there that's really trying to make it in music, I just, it was kind of funny how I um, really got big was I was on YouTube just singing songs and songs that I wrote and stuff, and I'd end up getting, put a, made a post saying, hey, you know, I mean, I'm looking for someone to try to, you know, pursue my, pursue my music career, and my producer just gave me a chance, you know, he was like, hey, I'm a producer, and blah, blah, you know, and that's really how my career really got started. So it, it can really happen that way, you know. People can get picked up off YouTube and different things, so it, it can happen. What would be the What would be the words of advice for someone who might be in a position to say, you know, you watch these shows of American Idol and and all these, and there's thousands and thousands yeah. of people trying to get out there. Is do you have a little secret that you might want to share with them of maybe not doing the traditional route, but something that they could try to help them get a little bit more recognized if they have the talent? The main thing, and, and, and what I've heard and what I know so far since I've been doing this, is you've got to do something and have something different from anybody else. you got to have a different style, different the boy. You can't, because you go to these different bars and different places and stuff, and everybody sounds the same. Mm-hmm. And with that, you're not really it's not, you know. You gotta stand you out. Know, you gotta stand out, you know. I mean, when certain people come on the radio, you know exactly who it is. I mean, and that's the way you gotta be. You gotta stand out from okay. the crowd. Well, that's good words of advice. Because, I mean, like I said, you watch this and, you know, all the girls are pretty, all the guys are good looking, right. and they all sound great. But, yeah, I mean, you put them all in a pot, you gotta find something that got a right. different flavor, right. you know? Exactly. And then, I mean, nowadays, everybody. Auto tuned and this and this and that. I mean, that's just, I mean, anybody can do that. So right. it's got to be a raw, true talent. And a lot of people are scared. They're really good, but they're scared. And that's, you got to overcome your fears of, you know, that you have to just get over the stage fright and just jump out there and do it. Well, I think that's good words of advice for people um, who might be in that position. And, and you know, they got to have the confidence in themselves and, and just put out there the best foot forward and, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, but they really got to exactly. strive for it, I I guess, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something that you have to truly want and live and, and, and breathe, and it's got to be there. If not, you know, if you don't hear it in your music and hear it, you don't, if you're not living it and breathing it, you're not going to live, you know, it's not going to sound like you really want it, you know? Okay. Good, good, good. Absolutely great words of advice. Um... Before I let you go, let's go over those um, the website and how to contact you one more time, just so my listening audience um, hears it again. What's the best way? Uh, you're on the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, website, maybe. Yeah, well, Twitter and Twitter, I'm on a lot, and uh, Reverb Nation has pretty it's pretty much just my music page. But Twitter, you can pretty much follow me, and I have some other of my music band friends and stuff out there across the U.S. that they can connect with, too. And okay. So it's pretty neat how we all, us musicians, you know, we, we help each other out, promote each other, so. Good. I, I think I found you on Facebook, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I mean, I just, you just come across people, so, and it just, and it's cool. Once you, it's just, it's, it's like a big circle, big family of mu- music friends. Yeah, getting the network going and being out there, putting yourself out there on that network, and uh, yeah, and that's the main like thing. Like you said, I mean, market. And like you said, you, you can't be afraid. You got to have the confidence, and you got to be out there and step up and 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 do your best. So I think exactly. that's good. Well, Lee, I think you're an awesome dude. I really appreciate and respect the fact that you're willing to step out of the everyday, average, normal country and do something different with your outlaw, your back road country. And I wish you all the best. And uh, just stay in touch and let me know what's going on. And remember, our doors are always open. We'd love to have you here. All right. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Lee. And, and good luck. And keep us keep us in mind when you got something new and exciting going on. Even if you just get a chance to call in, I always like my artists to come back on the show and give us an update. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. Take care, my friend.